Okay, we will get started now. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, good afternoon in the East and good morning in the West. Um, we'll get started here, just a quick little PowerPoint presentation. And then we can jump into the meat and potatoes. So I just want to quickly touch on the Simcoe family of products. Um, I've got a little bit of a screen grab up here. Um, you know, there, there's many different products that Simcoe has. Um, you know, Simcoe Edit is, uh, I think, product that many of you are familiar with. Um, it comes, what, what we like to call the Simcoe Edit Lite or OEM version comes installed with Mastercram. So I would assume there's quite a lot of you that are uh, actively using the Simcoe Edit, whether it be for uh, looking at your NC programs, uh, editing your NC programs, and uh, potentially even communicating with your machines. Um, but what we're what we're focusing on today here is the the MDC Max and um, how Simcoe actually works. Is some softwares are built off of uh, the other softwares, and we'll touch on that a little bit. Um, but uh, as we go through this year and our, our, our plan for the webinars is uh, we will focus in on a couple of these other ones, MDM, uh, NC base, things like that. So, uh, but if you do have any questions on any of these uh, products, by all means, please feel free to reach out to uh, myself or uh, your sales rep. We can get you some information. Um, so actually, just before I get going here, I feel like... Uh, yeah, so it automatically skipped a, a page on me. So uh, my name is Lee. I'm the sales manager for uh, Ontario Out West. And with us, we have uh, Andre um, Lapointe. He's from uh, the Quebec uh, team, and he's a very senior service and solution technician. And he'll be doing the presentation um, that we have. Uh, we're actually showing you some live stuff, and uh, we'll get into that after I'm done with my PowerPoint. So thanks for joining us, Andre. No problem. Um, so just a little touch on the how sort of MDC works. Is a, um, I've got a, a little screenshot over here. This is by no means a complete setup, but it's an example of how uh, MDC sort of uh, works. And you know, if we we look over on the left here and we start with the CNC machine, um, you know, we have a connection that is our DNC Max server. And then we've got our MDC at the PC, and then we've got the product, um, which is NC Base. Some of you, uh, again, might be familiar with NC Base, but it essentially keeps all of the files together. So these sort of three here work in coordination um, and, and output the information as we like to see it. So from the DNC Max server is where we can, you know, get our, our, our Max client and our visual representation, be it on a PC a uh, cell phone or a tablet um, and then we have you know the excel document here that comes out of the mdc which gives us our reports and live screens which you can kind of see some screenshots over here i won't focus on this too much because i know andre is going to really touch on that but this is just sort of a general summary of sort of how mdc works within the shop and uh, your network um, so if we dive a little bit deeper now on the, you know, the shop floor and the office and, and all of um, the information that we can sort of collect. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just an example. Um, but so essentially how it works is we have data collection uh, from the machine. So some of the uh, information that we can collect is, you know, start, stop, some alarms, feed holds, etc. Uh, from there, we have uh, the user interface, and we have some reasons that we can control here with this user interface that can be input, such as downtime reasons, the operator name, the part number, and scrap. Um, so all of this information can be input in several different ways, um, and we'll touch on that as well. Uh, but this is done you know, at the shop floor, and as it feeds through the system, we get to see that in the office. Um, here's where we're touching on sort of the um, the way that the user or the pro or the operator can um, input downtime reasons uh, or codes. Um, on this shot over here on the left, 
we've got a barcode scanner. Um, this works well. There's obviously a, a, a few more bits and pieces to make that operate. Whereas on the right hand side here, we've got the operator uh, screen and we can use that by a tablet attached to the control. And this is where the operator or the user can input information in downtime reasons and you know however we would like to have that set up um, so that gives you a good idea there so this is just a little bit touching on the screen as you can see we're live in a shop up here on the right hand side um, and they've zoomed in and you can see we've got some um, machines that are red some machines that are green um, and then down here, this is sort of what your uh, screen might look like on a wireless in the desktop. And again, what it's giving you is, as an example, you know, what jobs are in production, how many good parts have been produced, how much scrap have we produced, uh, what machines are, are down and why. How much potentially, maybe you want to show this, maybe not, uh, how much downtime has cost what's causing the downtime and uh, you know the real time display is is what we see here so the benefit here is you know if if the operator is constantly running one program and breaking a tool well everybody's going to be aware of that we're going to realize that some th changes need to be made um, but again i'll leave that andre will touch on that um, here's just a quick little screen grab of what you know potentially again this is just an example but what your reports and graphs can look like um, with all the data, uh, and again, Andre will touch on this, but um, you know the reports can give you daily, weekly, monthly, uh, really whatever your sort of requirement is, or even ongoing, you can have these reports. Um, so, just want to touch a little bit on you know the potential sort of setups. Uh, dive a little bit deeper on the, the networking aspect of what we can. Uh, do and connect to. So this is, I guess you could say, potentially a preferred setup. Um, a lot of our, uh, you know, the newer machines that we're seeing uh, come with an Ethernet ready port. Um, therefore, it's a simple connection with an Ethernet cable uh, through, a, this example says wireless switch, it doesn't necessarily need to be wireless, it can be wired. Uh, but for example purposes, we're just showing that off and, you know, this is a connection in the setup that you would have if you had six CNC machines that happen to have, you know, a makeup of these different um, controls. Now, not I should say that not all controls, CNC controls um, that are brand new that say, you know, is a FANUC actually has the FANUC focus feature. It's something that potentially, um, you know, your your OEM may charge for, may have to be turned on, these sorts of things. But ideally what we're seeing out in the field is these new machines um, that have the ethernet uh, port and connection set up. This, this is you know, the type of connection that we're looking for. What the nice thing is, is the machine is actually outputting this information. So, you know, there can be, you know, almost too much information coming out of here. So we can control what's monitored coming out of these machines, run it through the DNC Max server, turn it into something that, you know, the layman's, if you will, can read and see and, and looks nice um, on the screen, on a graph, so on and so forth. So this is, I guess you could say, you know, more of a, a modern setup. Um, this is uh, a bit more, this is going to be a different situation. This is where we have a, um, a setup of a control that is, you know, legacy or RS-232. So we, you know, coming from the shop into a wired or wireless device, RS-232 cable over to an MDC box, um, which is wired to the control. And then we also need to join in and collect some signals, whether we go through the signal stack um, or actually using some hardware to connect into the back into the PLC to grab this information. So there is a situation where you could be in a hybrid setup. You can have, you know, four modern machines and four legacy machines, and, and therefore that can, you know, complicate things a little bit, but nevertheless, we can bring it all together with the DNC um, and the MDC softwares. So um, again, this is just a representation to to show an example of you know how we would do 
Ethernet to RS-232. So we've got Ethernet coming into the machines, and then from there we need to use a MOXA to connect to the control and get some information. Um, here's where we're showing uh, where I touched on the fact if, if we, you know, we had a DNC set up already, and now we needed to actually collect some hardware or some, some inf signals from the parts counter or the cycle start, this is where we need to physically uh, wire in a piece of hardware into the control. So again, this is an example of RS-232 setup um, and not just straight Ethernet connection. So just a quick summary here, um, you know, again, this is just the this, this, this setup of the softwares, the CNC, the live screens, and the reporting. Everything kind of gives you a picture of what it could look like uh, on, on the shop floor. So I think that's it for me. Yep. Um, Andre, I don't know if you want me to pass the screen yeah, I'll, or if you want to just grab it. Yeah, I'll grab it. Okay. I'll start sharing my screen. Great. So, um, uh, yeah, so what I have right now on my screen is a, um, I have a script that runs uh, with a bunch of uh, random events and random calls simulating somewhat what is happening into a machine shop floor. So I have five machines currently running, or actually I have one that has no work on it right now, so it should be coming back in uh, pretty soon, I guess. Um, so, um, so what you can see is one of the live screen that, uh, the, that we can configure. So everything is more or less fully uh, customizable so we can choose whatever informations we want to display on it um, and we can have various formats so for example this is one of my real screen real-time screen I could have one with different informations I can have uh, separate rows or uh, columns I shall say um, I can even build up some alarm screen so no machines are in alarm right now so that's why my screen is empty but uh, if you have a a fairly big uh, machine park and you have uh, maintenance people monitoring stuff so you could have them a screen like that and they would know right away which machine is an alarm or not um, so that's just one of the many features we can use that for um, also the uh, information that is displayed here may come from various sources uh, uh, some of them will come from the machine, obviously, like the timers and uh, like based on the signals that we will catch. Uh, but some others may come from uh, either uh, operator inputs or uh, database input. So, uh, for example, in my case, I'm using a link, a strong link to NC base, which is a Simcoe database part. And uh, into that database, I have for every different uh, part number. Uh, that I have in my script. I have all these estimated cycle times uh, that I can pull out. I have all these customer they are, that they are associated to. Uh, and all this information can be pulled up automatically, either from Simcoe NC base or from any um, SQL type database that could be tied, for example, to uh, your ERP or any other elevated system like that. Um, so like I said, this is uh, customizable, so you can choose whatever you want to display in here. Um, uh, the other kind of screen that we have that will help us to gather some information is what we call the operator screen. So I have one up here. So that's the operator screen for the machine HMC518, which is currently operated by Glenn and running on this information. So from here, uh, I can either uh, set an operator login or logout uh, function. So I can say, well, you know what? Plan is not here today anymore. So we're just gonna log Andrew to work on this machine. And that's it, simple as that. And then I'll be able to see that reflect right away here on my live screen as well. This data is also being tracked all throughout the database. So if you wanna, uh, do some research later down the road where you want to know who worked on that uh, specific work order. Well, you can make a search and see that it's been done on this machine with this operator 
within this time frame, like this day between, let's say, 10 a.m. and 12 p.m., something like that. Um, you can also have access, and which one it's uh, one of the most important thing about the operator screen is that it allows you to report the reason for a specific downtime. Okay, so um, no matter what kind of uh, method we are using to pull out the data from the machine, whether it's a network protocol or if we're using more hardware kind with the IO logics. Uh, we we can easily track whether the machine is running or if it's not running. And when we're using the network protocol, we can uh, get a lot more detailed information. But if the machine is just not running and it's not an alarm uh, or an emergency stop, there's no way for us to know exactly why it, it is being stopped. So that's where the operator input is really important. And one way, uh, the main way they're going to be uh, reporting these downtime is to use this kind of feature here called report downtime, where you see the current status. And if the machine would be not running at the moment, I would be able to just pick whatever reason I have in here. And this is, again, fully customizable based on whatever you want to keep track of. But while the machine is running, I can go into the back date and see all the other occurrences where the machine was stopped since the beginning of the day or the beginning of the shift or whatever time frame you you wish to keep track of. And then you can say, for example, well, this here, it's been stopped for almost two minutes. So um, it was due to an inspection. So let's say part inspect, uh, for example, bore A8, for example. And then I just resolve this, this again. And then now this downtime period in the database, instead of being reported as just being a machine stop, will now be associated to the inspection tag. So if I pull out the, uh, the, the downtime reason, I'll have this time period associated to an inspection and so on and so on for all the other downtime. So you can uh, have them uh, report whatever is happening in here. Um, other things that the operator can do from this screen is set up the work order information. Okay, so based on your setup, it could it could change a little bit, but most of the time the operator will come in here, just type in the work order that he's gonna be working on, how many parts it needs to produce, and then uh, this information will be pushed into the database and uh, start the timer. So as soon as you change the work order, the job timer starts. So then you need to put yourself into setup mode and then you keep track of the time that the setup takes. And then once you're uh, ready to go, you just say, okay, I'm okay to run. And then whenever cycle starts gonna be pushed on the machine, the running time is gonna be accounted as a cycle or production time. Um, uh, within the work order information, we can also put information as to, for example, uh, I have, a, a, a scrap part, so I need to tell the system that I had a scrap part, so I just hit the button as many times as I need to. Or we can put a field here and just input it at the end, so you just say, okay, I have as many, that many scrap parts, and then enter, and then it, this will be uh, logged into it. Um, something that I've done as well, because I'm uh, linked to the uh, NC base and I have all access to this information, is I can click here and open directly the NC file of the program that is currently being uh, run on the part or is about to be run on the part. And also I can uh, turn on this option here and then just pull up the setup sheet. So if you wanna go paperless uh, into your work uh, workflow, that could be a pretty good idea, uh, a pretty good way to work with that. Um, uh, next, we have uh, what we call the dashboard. Okay, so the dashboard is really like an overview of the actual production or um, uh, efficiency of your of your shop floor at the moment. So this is all live data. So uh, what it tells me right now is that uh, since the beginning of the day, so since uh, eight o'clock Eastern time, I've been using my machines for about thirty five percent of the time. So it's not super efficient. Uh, so you can see I have targets here of 
about, I think it's 40%. So I, I'd wish to be between 40% and 60%. So uh, I'm still far off apparently. Um, so I have here a summary, uh, overall production summary of how many time has, uh, I spent in production, how many time I spent idle in setup, downtime or offline. Um, and then I have uh, more detailed information about machine running time, stop time, how many parts has been produced since the beginning of the day on these each machine. I have the total for the whole shop. I have these individual utilization uh, gauge here. I have individual uh, production summary for each machine. And then I have individual downtime. So everything that is ca uh, listed as a downtime in the production summary is being break down, uh, broken down, sorry, over here. So I have for each machine and I have a, a color scheme as well. What is uh, the best case scenarios? What is the uh, uh, expected value and then if it would be red it would be like over the expected value so you can set some limits in here based on each machine and you can also have a timeline a live timeline so it's dynamic so I can just browse my mouse over and see what was happening during this lapse so it was in cycle here it was a tooling issue it lasted about three minutes on this machine and then you can have that. So I split it up into those three shifts that, I, that I'm that i running. So right now they started this morning, so there's nothing in the other two shifts. So I can have that. Uh, I can have some other informations that uh, that are really uh, interesting for, uh, for some people is that uh, you wanna see uh, the benefits of your uh, production. So you have, uh, for example, the current cycle time compared to the estimate or the, the estimated or planned cycle time so if i'm ever going more than a hundred percent of my plan cycle time i'll see it here and if i'm having more if my cycle is running more than 10 percent of the planned cycle time it's going to be listed here so for example well this machine is not running so let's just not account for this one but for this one, like over the 13 parts produced, five of them has taken more than the uh, planned cycle time. So we can keep track of some issues that uh, may happen uh, along the way and adjust uh, either our planned cycle time or the, uh, the process and figure out what's happening uh, in here. So, uh, and then I have also have a graphic of how many good parts compared to the bad parts that I have done so far uh, since the beginning of the day here. So you can see this is bumping up. So stop a little bit be before the 10% uh, extra. Um, something else that is interesting is you could have a graphic display or layout of your machine floor and to and like display the live status of each machine individually and then as you move your mouse over you can just see uh you can choose what kind of information you have in here so right now i have some limited information but i could pull in some um uh, information about the work order or the job number or uh, a program that is being run or which operator is currently running the machine so this is all information that uh, can be uh, saved and put onto the live screen. So this is showing you the exact same uh, status as the, the real time screen that we have here. Um, now this is all accessible. This is what we call the web client. So it's uh, accessible from any web browser, as long as you have a connection to the server where uh the, uh the 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 system is running so this is it's not because we're accessing it from a web browser that the data is on the cloud so all the data is stored locally into your facility on your server and um as long as you have a connection to the server you can access this information be it on uh, on a tablet or on your cell phone if you have for example a vpn access you could be the other way of the other side of the world and then just look at what's happening on your shop floor right now. 
Um, the only thing that we cannot do with the web interface is the generation of the report. So if you want a daily report of what's been, ha what's happening, what has happened, sorry, yesterday, for example, or the week before or the last month, you have to go through what we call the actual client, which is this interface here. Uh, and then you just go into uh, data and then you can come in here, generates a report. So I have a daily report, for example, that I call, I can pull out, for example, uh, February 2nd. Just going to compile, crunch all the numbers, and put everything up into a PDF that I can uh, uh, look afterwards. This PDF can, um, can be sent by email uh, automatically as well on a daily basis. For example, we can write scripts that will generate these automatically. So here's what we have for our, this first uh, report. So let's just uh, put this a bit bigger here. So I have uh, my machine utilization summary here. So I have it separated by shift. And then I have the average, the daily average utilization of my machine. I have this productivity summary chart where I know the percentage of uh, different situation. Um, I could have this as a percentage or as the main hour, the, like the main time that at each event has uh, lasted. And I also have, uh, I can have a bar graph like this and on which I can set a minimum and a target like that I want to look at. In this case, it's for machine utilization. But we can have graphs on about any data that we are pulling out from the system so we get the like the system will collect the data and then you can do basically whatever you want with it so you can also output some timelines uh of uh what happened that day so you can see if uh there's been a lot of downtime if it was more located uh into a specific area of the day or if it's uh or if it's spread it evenly throughout the day uh, in this case, there's uh, really a lot of event. The uh, reason being is that uh, my script is meant to generate a lot of events. Like it's really short cycle time, like 30 seconds to two minute and a half and um, small runs. So I wanna generate a lot of action, a lot of data into my database so that it be more interesting for uh, people when I show it to you. Uh, so that's why I'm most likely on your case, there's gonna be a bit more green and less red, hopefully. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's one sample of report. Something else that we can generate. Sometimes it's, it's interesting to have an idea of what program or what job has been run on a specific day. And uh, again, keep in mind that these reports can be fully customized to display the information that you want. So for example, I have, uh, a job list uh, for each machine, but separated by shift. So this is what has been run on the first shift. This is one has been, what has been run on the second shift and on the third shift for this machine. And then uh, go on for each of my machine. And a different way to display the exact same information would be to have all the shift into one table. So I have jobs here. This one has been run on shift number one and this one started shift number two and then you can keep track of what happened during the day and if some jobs overlapped like this one here it overlapped on shift two and shift three sorry so you can see that it's been, it took about two minutes it just started on shift two and then completed on shift three and then you can keep track of that and see the difference between uh, the production time or the downtime for the same job on the same machine, for example. Um, so these are all different ways that we can display the uh, same information. Um, something else that we can do that uh, I can show you is I've set up some uh, email notification from the system. So as you can see, if I pull this out, I just received an email um, about one minute ago about this 
uh, machine here saying that there was a part completed and it was the fourth one out of 12. So it matches the information that I have here. So four out of 12. And uh, I can get this on a regular basis. I can get them for as well for job completed. So we know that this machine recently stopped uh, stopped working. So I have received an email saying, hey, we have a job completed on this machine. There were 13 units completed out of 13 and then three scraps. So you get the uh, current job time and the operator and some information. And again, the content of the email can be customized based on whatever you need uh, or whatever you want. And you can use these email notification to uh, to do some sort of a escalation process. So, for example, if a machine is in a no work state for more than uh, I don't know fifteen minutes, well, you can have the system send an email to the uh, production manager and say, "Hey, why is this machine not running?" For example, or uh, has no job being assigned to, and then if the status doesn't change like 20 minutes later or half an hour later whatever the time frame that you set we can escalate that send that notification to an higher level down the down the hierarchy and see how it goes so um yeah i think that kind of summarized pretty much everything that i wanted to talk about lee is there anything else you want me to touch base on this no i think that was uh that was a that was great it was perfect um it just gives everybody a, a good idea um you know as i as i mentioned it's it's in no way sort of exhaustive we you know i'm sure andre could talk um hours about this stuff uh, but the idea is just to show you sort of the information um, that can be monitored, the information that can be collected, the information that can be disseminated um, on the different uh, mediums, you know, the reporting, the um, the information as a whole. Um, it's really, I think, you know, it's a it's essentially kind of like a feedback loop, if you will, and it can be a it can be a tool that can bring all departments together. Um, you know, not only is it just for management, it's obviously for the programmers, it's obviously for the operators. Um, you know, you touched on the fact that we can identify where where these bottlenecks are or where these issues are or where we're, you know, tools are breaking constantly. And therefore, you know, we can all that information is displayed. Everybody can see it. And, you know, you can have meetings and figure out where these things, where these issues lie and, you know, uh, ideally predict them uh, down the road after you've been looking at, at this info. Um, so yeah. no, I think you did a fantastic job. I really appreciate it. Um, and again, there's I, guess a, I could touch there's on the fact one thing that maybe I want to, I want to make sure that um, I, I mention it is that all the data is saved locally on the comp on your own company's server. Yeah. So there's no cloud based system in here. So the, like I said, even if we're working through a web client, it just means that this browser is connected to your uh, your own server. And yep. not uh, and not anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. You did touch on that, but that's great. I think that's it. that is important to to bring up um, the fact that you know if you if you think you're looking at it wirelessly, you just have to have the ability to VPN into into your company yes. network. Um, I do like the fact that you know not only is it this just for c gathering data, um, you know the setup sheet aspect. Um, so you can go paperless if you want. The fact that you can access the NC files and it's all complementary. Um, and again, this is kind of pretty in depth um, as far as uh, you know what you've shown. It can be MDC can also be quite simple if you want. You could just have a parts counter, um, you know those sorts of things. And you can you know obviously we suggest to step in. Um, you know we start out sort of what we say level one, MDC level one. Get that working monitor the information for a month or two, say, and then move it up to level two. Um, but there's, you know, this this isn't exhaustive, but it, I think the idea that we've shown here is a great summary of what is capable. And, you know, if, if people sort of have um, deeper questions, um, I mean, we can actually open it up for questions here. 
uh, right now. But uh, what I would say is if you want to see more, you know, obviously we can, you know, connect you with a rep and a technician, have an on-site assessment, discuss sort of some of the, you know, things that you think that you want to monitor and, and, and kind of carry on the conversation from there. Um, but if we did, if anybody did have any questions, um, there is a, a little hand where you can put your hand up um, and what I can do from there is, is just unmute you and you can ask a question. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, um, we do have a chat box uh, or a questions box, either or. Um, you can use either of those mediums. It's in the little widget that is in sort of the top right corner of your screen. So I think we can um, sort of sit here and see if anybody's got any questions. Um, so one question just came in, software yeah. like ProShop. Well, um, I'm not sure what ProShop is. I'm guessing it's some kind of ERP. If it does, it can be, uh, it can communicate with it as long as it's using some kind of a SQL database in the background, we can come in and read or uh, write some information uh, into that. So for example, uh, you, we could pull out the job list from the ERP and send a signal to the ERP system uh, when the job is being uh, put on the machine. And then we can send another signal to the ERP when the job is being completed so that uh, you can keep track of the production process. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it is similar. Um, oh, sorry, okay. It looks like the question was also cut off. Can the MDC work or integrate with 3D part software like ProShop? Yeah. Um, third part, so yeah. That would be something I think we would look have to look into. Uh, I myself am not familiar with ProShop either, um, but I think I do see some advertisements and emails come in for that. So I would say that it is somewhat similar. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like um, Andre alluded to, if it's from an ERP standpoint, uh, there are ways to integrate it with, uh, you know, third party ERPs. Definitely something we would want to investigate though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's something like the, the, the way it works with the ERP is similar to what I've done in this case where I'm pulling out the estimated cycle time. I'm pulling out the customer name and the part number associated with the work order. So all these information are being pulled out from the, uh, the database and that's, it, it has not been uh, being sent or put in, put in by the operator. On, on purpose so we just put in minimum information and then we sent the query to the database saying hey i have this program what can you like what information do you have for me if i'm asking you what's the cycle time what's the uh the customer name and su and such and then pull this out and then i can use it and display it into my live screen or i can use it into my report and say hey this month we've run like so many parts for this customer and so many parts for this other customer. So if I have this data available, I can make reports out of it. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, one more question here. Is yeah. there a limited amount of machines that MDC can be connected to? Not that I know of. Yeah. We've had, we have a few customers that are well above 50, 60 and 100 machine and it's still working pretty smooth. It really depends on the uh, reliability of your infrastructure, uh, of your network. But uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of the software itself, it's not limited to any number of machine that I know of. Yeah. Right. Um, don't see any other questions we still have everybody that joined us here um, is there anybody that wanted to either ask a question instead of typing it like i said you can there is an option to to put your hand up um, but otherwise i think we're we're about ready to wrap it up so I will say thank you everybody for joining us and, and uh, having a quick look at this uh, summary of, of what MDC uh, is and can potentially do. 
Um, but I, like I said, if I think if you want to delve deeper, uh, please reach out to me and I can coordinate setting up a, a meeting and uh, to just to even discuss um, what, what is possible um, more on a personal level specific to your shop. Um, again, we can obviously only show an example. Uh, everybody's different. Everybody has different machines. Some people have legacies. Some people have all Ethernet. Um, obviously, we can do hybrid setups and configurations, um, the reporting and everything. I, I think the, I, the main idea behind MDC is it is uh, entirely customizable. Um, we do have stuff, configurations that are set up. Like I said, we kind of have different level ones. And uh, of course, we can sort of present that to you and show you kind of how that works. And uh, yeah, just have a deeper conversation about it. So if we don't have any more questions, which appears that I, I do not see any, then yes, we can wrap it up. And so thank you, uh, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Andre, for uh, showing us this, this Thanks, great uh, example. I think it was, I think got the message across and shows really, really well. To, I like the dashboard right now as it looks. Great. Perfect. Great. Oh. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thank you all. And uh, this recording, it, it, I did record this, so it will be available. It takes a little bit of time to compile, but like I said, if anybody has any questions, wants the recording, just reach out to me and I'll, uh, I'll get it out to you. Thank you all. And have a great afternoon.